Mr. McFall presents Science Jokes Explained. Helium walks into a bar and orders a drink. The barman says, we don't serve noble gases here. Helium doesn't react. Okay, that's a pretty good joke. The joke here centers around the fact that if you look at the periodic table of the elements, this group over here is the noble gases, which does indeed contain helium. Helium is a noble gas. It has a full outer shell of electrons and therefore doesn't react with other elements. And that is why helium doesn't react to the bartender whenever he says that he won't get served. Why can't you trust atoms? Because they make up everything. Okay, so the punchline here is to do with the fact that atoms make up everything. They're one of the fundamental components of matter. So everything around us in the universe is made up of atoms. Now, surprisingly, this idea is pretty ancient. It goes back to the ancient Greek philosophers like this guy Leucippicus who came up with this idea not through any science but through thought experiments through metaphysical reasoning he sort of had the idea that if you have a cake and you cut it in half uh, you have half a cake and then if you cut that cake in half again you get a quarter and if you keep cutting it down and down and down and down and get down to the tiniest crumb, he said that there would be something there, something that you wouldn't be able to cut any further. And he called that idea an atom. And that's actually where we get the name atom today. So um, if you think about the word atom, what it reminds me of is in histology, if you want to get a nice little piece of tissue to look at under the microscope, say you're in a microbiology lab and you want to take a look at somebody's cells, um, you use an instrument called a microtome. And it's called a microtome because it takes a really thin cut. The word tome here is Greek and it means to cut. So microtome means small cut. So an atom, an atom, is something which is literally uncuttable. It's atomable. And that's where we get the idea that atoms make up everything. It's the bit of matter which isn't uh, divisible. You can't cut it any further. It makes up everything. I was going to tell you a good science joke, but the good ones are gone. <laughs> Okay, not a huge amount of science here. Uh, the joke here is that one of the noble gases is called argon, and I suppose the name argon sounds a little bit like argon, and that's the joke, that these things sound the same. Argon, argon. Okay, this is one of my favourites. A photon checks into a hotel and is asked if he needs any help with his luggage. The photon replies, no, I'm traveling light. <laughs> okay, so the joke here centers around an interesting phenomenon in quantum physics. Light can be described as traveling like a wave, or uh, it travels in little packets of energy. And actually, both of these descriptions are true, and this is known as wave-particle duality. Einstein famously had this to say about it. It seems as though we must use sometimes the one theory and sometimes the other, while at times we may use either. We're faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomenon of light, but together they do. So light is both a wave and a packet of energy and it travels as both of these those packets of energy are called photons so a photon is literally how light travels it's traveling light so a chemist likes pb and j sandwiches he ate one and died <laughs> i patrick told me that i don't know why that's funny so the joke here is that elements in the periodic table are represented by either a single letter or a two-letter K.
chemical symbol. Um, and the chemical symbol for lead is represented by the letters PB. And that is because the Latin for lead is plum bum. That is what the Romans would have called lead. And in fact, that is where we get our word for plumber from because the Romans had pipes which were made out of lead. So somebody who worked with the lead pipes was known as a plumber. Um, so uh, a PB and J sandwich uh, to our American friends, that would be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Obviously the PB here refers to delicious peanut butter and not to lead, which is toxic, which is why if you had a lead and jelly sandwich, you would definitely die. Heisenberg was stopped by a police officer for speeding. The police officer said to Heisenberg, do you know you were doing 103 miles an hour? And Heisenberg says, thanks, now I'm lost. <laughs> So the joke here revolves around something called Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. And this relates back to what we said about light waves earlier on in this video. Um, as you proceed downward in size with an atom, um, as an atom becomes smaller and smaller, it is no longer valid to consider the particle like it's just a hard sphere. So um, whenever it becomes that small, it becomes more wave-like. And therefore, whenever you're considering a particle like this, that's kind of a particle, kind of a wave, it no longer makes sense to say that you have precisely determined both its position and momentum. So momentum and position are what we call conjugate variables and what that means is if you know one with no error the error involved in knowing the other one is without limit therefore you can't be certain about it that means that if you know one absolutely you can't be certain about the other one and so therefore whenever Heisenberg is pulled over by the police and he's told what speed he was going he's told his momentum he no longer knows his position and so he says, now I'm lost. So I hope you enjoyed this look at some of the science behind our favourite jokes. Feel free to leave your favourite science joke in the comments below. And I'll see you next time for the next video.